All right, we're back at it again here on this R90 slash six and hoping to get a little chunk more done today. We'll button up some of the wiring that's just hanging off and stuff. So I'm just gonna start with reattaching this starter relay. That's what this thing is. Um, doesn't look good, Does, doesn't mean it doesn't work. If we need to, we can replace it. We do have nice reproductions, but let's just mount it up and move on here. And here's that reproduction part I was referring to for the uh, starter relay. We have them for the slash five and slash six models. Okay, now I'm gonna move around to the other side. So on this side, this is the voltage regulator and who knows what's up with that. It looks all pretty fried. I'm just gonna go ahead and change it out. I've got a nice new one here. We have a few different versions of the voltage regulator. This one's real similar to the original in the metal casing, but what's cool about it is it's, um, the internals are all solid state. There's no moving parts. These old, old uh, style voltage regulators, they have like a coil and points in them and not super reliable. And we also have some high voltage um, regulators available as well for if you do a lot of in-town driving or something like that. But go ahead and change this out. Just gonna unplug the wire like that and then remove the two mounting screws. Right. So next thing about is these, these uh, plug wires, have a look at these things. You can unscrew the connector. This is a NGK. So, you know, these are pretty beat, they're kind of the wrong color. Ah, I'm gonna make up some new plug wires. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna trash these, put some new ones on. So I'm gonna show you how to build some spark plug wires out of individual components. They're available as complete assembly for BMW, but they're, this is a much more cost-effective way and the end result is really very good. So it's easy to do, I'm gonna show you how. So here's the wire. This is a copper core wire, which is what I recommend. And this is an original Baru wire. The spark plug connectors are also Baru, and they include these little dust seals here. For the other end of the wire that connects to the coil, you'll want to use these dust seals. And then the wire itself is sold in one meter length. If you just cut it in half, you'll have actually just about the right perfect length to make two wires. So on one end, the wire is just simply gonna screw into the connector. And on the other end, you have a choice. This is the type of connector that is soldered on, which is what I'm gonna use in this repair or in this creation. If you don't have access to a soldering iron or you don't wish to solder. We also offer this type, which is a screw on. And this type of connector, you simply stick it into the end of the wire and just twist it in all the way until it bottoms out. It's a perfectly viable way to do it. I just kind of like soldering stuff. So just wanted to show you that that's also an option that you have. It's pretty cool. All right, so now I'm gonna take this wire. And actually, that part that I just screwed the wire into, I'm just gonna snip that off because I kind of mangled the end of the wire. We can cut this in half. There we go. Okay, I've cut the wire in half 
And um, I'm going to start with one of them here. And simple enough is to remove this boot from the connector and give it just a little tiny bit of lubricant. WD-40 works well. And then you can actually push the wire in from the inside of the boot like so. It's a little bit easier if you do it this way. Once you get a good piece of it sticking out, you can grab onto it and then just pull the wire all the way through like that. Then take the connector and there's like a little sheet metal screw it looks like that's part of the connector on the inside. And we're just going to basically screw that right into the center into the copper core. So it'll center up and then you just start to twist this on. And you can feel it sort of screw and eventually you reach a point where it seems to bottom out like that that now that so that's done now I'm just going to push the connector on all the way and there we have it so I went ahead and did the other side the same way so I've got my two plug wires here and now we're going to solder the ends on the other end so for stripping the wire I really like these pliers that we sell they do a lot of things. You'll see them in, some, in a little while on this video, how other uses for it. But it's got a really nice, easy to use wire stripper. So I'm just gonna kind of carefully work around and then expose that wire. I'm gonna just sort of go in and trim off that fiberglass reinforcement. just to expose the actual wire itself. Do it on both sides. Cool. All right, now the connector, you simply slide it right over the top, let the wire go through all the way like that. Okay, and you can trim off a little bit of excess, like so. And then we do the other side too. Just hold it like that with a pair of pliers, it works pretty slick, and then we can go in and solder that. So when you solder, you wanna actually always heat the, the biggest part, not the wire itself. You want to heat up, in this case, the connector. So lay your soldering iron on there and then as it starts to heat up, you want it to flow being melted by the, not by the wire, but by the actual connector. Make a nice little puddle like that. Let that just cool for a second. So there's that part of it. There's more to it than a minute. So here again, I'm just going to use the pliers just to kind of hold it in place. So it's straight up and down pretty much. Go in and solder the other one. And when you get it hot enough, you know it because it just like makes a nice little puddle like that. And that's enough. Done. Okay. Now that's not too pretty. We're just going to knock the ends off on the grinder. Make them nice and smooth. Okay, so here you see how I soldered the end and there's the wires protruding through there. So we're just going to touch this on the grinder to knock that down, make it flat. Like so. See, that's it. That's what we're trying to do. Let's do the other one. See the wire there? Kind of the big puddle of solder. So I could have done the, the, put the other uh, boot on first, but it actually works out well to put it on last because um, we can't really use that same trick of going in from the inside. And it's a heck of a lot easier to push a piece of metal through here than it is a soft, bendable wire. So I'm just a little bit of lubricant on here. It's a lot easier to push it on to the metal connector. So now you have a complete wire ready for installation.
Here we go. Two of them. Here they are. So you always want to look inside the coil and make sure that there's no corrosion in there. If you see any kind of green goop or anything, you need to scrape that out or sand it out. These look pretty good. You can totally see the copper and it should be fine. But it's very common to get corrosion in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, when we get to that point, we're going to start the motor with the plugs out and spin it until we get oil pressure and then I'll put the spark plugs in. So for right now, I'm just going to plug these in and sort of ground them on the cylinder head. First though, these plugs have to remove the little fitting on the end of the plug. Just setting on there will be a sufficient ground. Okay, so we're going to install a new ground strap here. It goes here from the negative terminal to the, the gearbox. A couple things to think about here. This boot, you can see how cracked that is. It's very common. And this boot should always be replaced when it shows, shows any sign of being cracked or if it's brittle because water can get right through here and it runs right into the gearbox. And it can result in some very expensive repairs to the to the bearings and stuff like that if that happens. So we've got this really cool, you could use the original replacement, which is rubber, but we have what we call the improved version, which is a slightly different design. It's a little tighter around the top, and also it's made out of a special type of butyl rubber that won't deteriorate as much as natural rubber will. So it um, should last quite a bit longer, makes a better seal. It's just an improved part over the original. So just pretty easy to replace. Just rip the old one off of there somehow. You can also cut it or whatever. So be, it can be pretty fiddly getting one of these things on there. So what, what can work is if you have a pair of uh, snap ring pliers like that, you can kind of spread it open. And that actually is a big help. You could just kind of like straddle it over. That gets you started on there and then just kind of work it on the rest of the way with the aid of a small screwdriver, perhaps. There, it's starting to go over the top now. There we have it, all right. Now, the other thing to note here is that this bolt that holds the speedo cable in and also connects the uh, ground strap for the battery has a little hole in it. Before we hook all this up, I just want to take this out. This is a special screw. Make sure this is the type of screw that's in there. And you see how it's got a hole drilled through. And we want to make sure that that's, that that's clear. You can hold it up to some light and just verify that it's clear. This one's fine. I can totally see light right through it. It's important because that's the vent the ventilation for the gearbox. Okay, so once you've verified that the screw has a hole, the hole of the screw is clear for the vent, whenever you work on the bike, anything with electrical, you take the front cover off, pretty much anytime you're in doubt, you're gonna to wanna to disconnect the ground strap. And um, you can see it's a little fiddly, a long screw pulling that out. By the time you get that screw out of there, you know, you, the wiring harness has gone up in smoke. <laughs> so what's uh, kind of a cool little thing to do is actually cut this ring connector, a little piece out of it, so that it just snip slides right over the bolt. When you tighten the bolt down, it'll still make a good ground contact, but if you ever need to take the ground strap off in a hurry, or it just in general, whenever you need to take the ground strap off, it'll just be loosening the screw a little bit and pop it off. So just take a, a pair of uh, wire cutters like this and just sort of an, at an angle, take a little piece off like that, and then make sure now that that's enough to fit over. It's always easier to nip off a little bit more later on, so that was, just take a little bit more off here. Cool, it fits just really nicely on there. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the screw back in. Speedo cable's in place. 
So now you see how that'll just fit in there like that. And I'll be able to tighten that with a wrench. It'll work out really well. So before I do that though, I'm gonna hook, the, hook up the cables to the battery. Yeah, so I, I still have the ground strap loose. The ground, hasn't been, the ground connection hasn't been made yet. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the positive connection on now. All right, so now plug in the other spark plug wire and get that situated with a spark plug installed and just kind of lay it on the cylinder like so, so that it'll ground a little bit. And now let's come back around here and hook up the ground cable. No sparks, that's a good sign. This doesn't have to be super tight, just a little bit snug because you don't want to strip out those threads in the, in the uh, transmission case. Okay, so I lowered the bike down just a little bit and I'm gonna turn the key on now that the battery's hooked up and see what happens. So here we go. So I got parking light or the dash illumination came on there. Oh, there we go. Neutral light, generator light, oil pressure light. Let's have a look at the lights here oh look at that parking light works headlight works high beam works pretty cool so we still have to get the turn signals hooked up i can see if they're going to work or not just kind of diagnose it just a test light ground it to the cylinder and we'll go ahead and So look at that. That turn signal is going to work once we hook it up. Let's try the rear one. That one's going to work too. Turn the other turn signal. Let's have a look at this side. Cool. That one's going to work too. So turn signal is good. Electrically, our lights are good. Let's have a look at the tail lights on. Brake light rear. Uh, brake light front is gonna need some work. That's not working right. So we'll have to figure that one out. But we'll have to come back to those turn signals in just a minute. Just like to kind of see where we're at. Now let's, now the real important one, the starter. Let's see what happens there. Uh oh, nothing, not even a click. Maybe it's that relay, so we're gonna have to look into that. And what else are we missing? Oh yeah, the horn. Let's see if the horn's gonna work once we hook it up. I'm just gonna put my test light in there, hit the horn button. Okay, so once we hook a horn up, it's gonna beep. Okay, so, front brake light switch, starter relay. Let's see what the heck's going on with that. Now in troubleshooting the starter problem, um, the starter relay is likely the problem. It looks pretty crusty, but before I condemn that relay and say that's absolutely it and order a new one or whatever, I'm gonna just test a couple things and see what's going on because it could also be a bad switch at the handlebar. So the way to isolate that is you need to refer to a wiring diagram. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so first we're gonna do is isolate the components in question here. So here's the starter relay. See this wiring diagram 75 to 76 slash six models. 
make sure you're in the right wiring diagram. Okay, so here's the wiring or the uh, starter relay. You see it's got five connections, five terminals on that relay. And then what makes the relay go is the switch. So we've, up here you see is the combination switch and there's the starter button. So when you press the starter button, it makes a connection here. Um, the, brown is o the ground is always, um, brown is always ground. So basically you're making a connection through this blue wire, you trace it down and all the way over here to the starter relay. And we see that that's terminal 85. So we need to find the wire that's plugged into terminal 85 and isolate that and test to see if the switch is working. Now, that relay, it, normally the relays are always um, marked, but that relay is probably gonna be very, very difficult to look at. So I do have a new one here. So let's look at what these are. So there's 85, 86, 87, 61, and 30 slash 15. This is always your power and ground. That's what's going on here. And so we can actually look at these, go back to the wire, wiring diagram one more time, and then you see what's happening in there. So terminal 30 is the red wire. That's always basically battery plus, straight off the battery is what that is. Then 85 is, is um, as we talked about, the uh, starter switch. 86 is switched hot. This is only hot when the key's turned on. And then you've got this one here. 87 is actually going to uh, the starter motor solenoid. And this D, D plus is going to energize the diode board for the charging system. So there's a lot of stuff going on in there. But basically what happens is that you want current to flow between terminal 30 and terminal 87 is what's going to happen. And it's going to, so when you apply the, um, these two, 85 and 86, when you make a, a negative and a positive connection here, this is a, a uh, magnet that's going to pull this down and join these two together. And basically the way a relay works is that you've got your switch that activates and this, these two circuits are just, make, are just the switch. That's all that is. The power is going to flow when this magnet is energized and this thing slams down and bridges those two. Then the current's going to flow from the battery across this part into terminal 87, which is going to energize the starter. That's basically how the relay works. So let's go ahead and look at the relay and find terminal 85 and see if that switch is bad or if, what's going on with that. So first of all, I'm just going to go in and take this relay back out again. Okay, so now here we go. Now this thing really does look pretty crusty. It's all corroded and oh my goodness. But anyway, we're still gonna go ahead and test this all out the way we talked about. Okay, now that I've got the relay kind of pulled out and we've identified this is number 86, terminal 86, by uh, referencing the new relay and they're, they're kind of stamped on there. And it happens to be this wire here. It's that single wire kind of green with a blue trace on it, that one there. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that wire. And then I'm gonna take a test light, connect that to the wire here. It goes to battery positive. And then you're gonna turn the ignition on. Press the starter button. So we just verified that the starter button is working correctly. So it's probably the relay, I'm gonna say, because that's a, for sure a positive on the, on the switch. So that's a good thing, because the switches are more difficult to find than, the, than the, the relays. Oh, and by the way, whenever you do this test, make sure that your starter or that your neutral light's on, because if you have it in gear or something, like this, neutral light's off, this has a starter lockout circuit. Now, it doesn't work. So you could incorrectly diagnose the switch if you had it in gear or your neutral light wasn't working because you have to have that green light on in the dash there. 
There we go. And then it works. All right, so let's, we'll go ahead and change out that relay. And to do that, I want to disconnect the ground strap that we put the little slit in before. I can just, I left the screw kind of loose so I can just pull that out. And now we're in no danger of frying every, anything at all. So I've got a new relay. And since this one is disconnected, might as well start there. Just gonna basically unplug each wire one at a time and plug it in where it belongs on the, um, on the new relay. That. Okay, so there's the old one, and it's pretty shot. It's got, let's, let's see if that fixed it. All right, so now everything's plugged in. Before I go ahead and fully install it, it should work just like that in that state. Make sure it's not touching anything weird. And then I'm gonna plug my ground wire back on. Key on. Now I've got my plug wires grounded and so on. Not that it's going to spark anyway, because we haven't even done the ignition yet. So it's not even something to worry about right now. Right now all I'm trying to find out is if the starter is going to work or not. Look at that. I'll run it until the oil pressure light goes out. Just went out, so perfect. It's all good. So that's that. All right, so now we've got a working starter motor. So now that we know that the relay fixed the problem with the starter, uh, we're just going to reinstall it. Okay, the next problem we had was with the uh, brake light switch. So I'm going to first of all unplug the wires. All right, so I've unplugged the wires from the switch here and turn the power on, the key on. And if I just touch these together, the tail light should, or the brake light should work. Let's see what happens. Look at that. So that pretty much conclusively tells me that it's the switch. So we'll have to change that out. Kind of sucks in a way because we already bled the brakes and everything like that and it's going to make a bit of a mess, but that's the way it goes. So um, let's get started with that. I got the new switch right here and I think I'm going to be better off disconnecting the master cylinder from the frame. I think that's going to be the way I'll do it. So kind of go a little bit backwards here. Loosen that clamp. Get this sort of up and out of the way. Okay. So I'm hoping that if I can just pretty quickly just swap this part out without losing a lot of brake fluid. Stick that new one right in. And then I'm going to give it a little squeeze here just to make the fluid go out past those threads. Maybe that'll save me from having to bleed the brakes again. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to crack it. Give it a squeeze. A little bit of fluid coming out and lock it right back down again. Okay, feels acceptably well. Now let's see if that fixed the problem. Yep, brake lights work. Okay, put that clamp back on and we just fixed those couple problems that we had.
Okay, so well, what have we done today? We've kind of gone through and verified that all the electrical circuits are w in working order, found a couple problems and fixed them. So that's all cool. Now it's just a lot of little detail work that we need to do, like putting the turn signals on. And um, then we can be pretty well assured that everything's gonna be functional. So far, horn, all the circuits are good. Um, then next, so next time we're gonna do is we're gonna get into the ignition system and set the points and time that. And we need to still get the tank on, um, get some gas in there, make sure it's all ready to go before we run it. And uh, so that's enough for today. But if you have any questions, leave comments below or contact us via email. And um, if you haven't already, please also subscribe to our channel. And you can also look down below in the video for links uh, to some of the parts that we used or referenced in this video. So see you next time. Take care.